thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having It was a pleasure watching this film, especially uh, being somebody who's Filipino as well, and, and seeing uh, Filipino production and uh, getting to see our people on, on the screen, which is, um, I think I might have wrote this uh, about the film that in this age of crazy rich Asians, uh, we are definitely in this movement for more diverse voices, more uh, diverse types of films to make it into the mainstream. So I was so happy to be able to watch this film. I'm really glad so. you all liked it. And yeah. thank you for bringing us to the Austin Film Festival. Um, you're right, it's it's wonderful to be represented up on the big screen. And it's it's been quite a journey for this little film. Will, you want to say a few words? Well, um, I appreciate everybody coming out. Um, when we got invited, or when we got accepted to the Austin Film Festival, we thought that was really great, but seeing people actually showing up for the film makes it really worthwhile. Thank you guys. So we are known as the Writers Festival, so whenever we select films for the festival, story always comes first. And so story is clearly what stood out for me the most. As somebody who reads many scripts for our script competition, um, I was very impressed by this story. Um, so what was the inspiration for this? You can speak on behalf of the filmmakers. Well, um, She's actually on my phone. Right now. <laughs> she's, she's in Vietnam. Uh, Therese. Yeah. Therese, can you hear me? Uh, okay, maybe it seems a little bit. Well, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, one of the things that um, I know Therese talked about in the past was that. Sorry, if you guys can hear me. One of the things that Therese talked about in the past was um, she um, she had seen this old older couple and they're kind of cranky, like Delia and Sammy and stuff. And she, she, she kind of was curious, like, how could she tell a story about those two and make it a love story that can appeal to people, even if they aren't the nicest people in the world or the best people in the world. And, you know, throughout the film, you get to know them more and kind of maybe learn more things that you don't like about them. But hopefully at the end, you realize people are, you know, human. And they still, you know, might, you know if they have love, you should cherish it. Yeah, what I loved about the film is how real the portrayal was about this couple because at first, you know, you, you start to, you know, fall in love with them. They're they're quirky. Like you, when you think of uh, older elderly Asian people, you think of the, the the warm loving ones who like bring you into your home and make you a bowl of noodles and all that and they're not that at all. And you soon realize that and it's actually was quite refreshing to be able to, to see a real human portrayal. And it was entertaining, and it was also kind of frightening to see how self-involved they were with each other and how, how much you know, um, that affected their relationship with each other and their family. So that really stood out. So in terms of casting, having to find uh, such challenging roles to fill, um, how did you find those actors? Um, we had really wanted um, really good actors for this for this story, it was so important to us to get just the right cast. Um, Sammy was played by um, Jaime Fabregas. He's, he's this very, very talented, very popular actor back in the Philippines. And Delio was played by the legendary Rosemary Hill. If you'll notice the last clip of the young lady who's supposed to be here, that's really her. She had, she had gone into retirement for a while, but she was, she was the bomb back in the 60s and 70s. And, um, this is actually her comeback feature film. And so we were honored when she said yes to us because she had never done an ind independent film, and, but she loved the script. And um, I think she just really wanted to do it justice as well. And we're so lucky to have her because as you can see, she, she went from you know manipulative to you can see how much love she has for Sammy. And she was just really the perfect fit for it. And, and even Roger, let's not forget Roger. He was, he was the perfect security guard to take along in that drag, yeah. We love, we love Nico Antonio, um, another very popular actor back home. But yeah, we were so lucky with our cast. They were wonderful. And even if um, Miss Rosemary, um, not being used to indie productions, had, had to you know, get used to the pace of shooting and everything, she, she just, um, in the end, she was like, she saw the final film and she fell in love with it all over again as well. So let's talk about the production in the Philippines. So what, what is it like to shoot a film in the Philippines, and for a lot of people here who aren't familiar with the Filipino film industry, I guess can you talk about like what what that is, what that's like over there? Do you 
do you want us from an outsider's point of view, partly outsider's point of view? Well, I mean, uh, most of my experience is productions in the Philippines, but um, like a little anecdote about the difference. Uh, I had a chance to shoot a little video at Stubbs, but they wouldn't allow me to because I didn't have insurance papers. But in the Philippines, you know, there's ways you work around it, and <laughs> now you still have insurance and you know, you know protect your equipment and stuff. But you, every time you go into a, a, a site or a, a set, you know, they're not asking for paperwork and all that stuff. They're very open, like, and they're very you know young filmmakers out there, so people are really willing to help us out there more. <clears throat> There's, there's a resurgence of independent cinema, sorry, cinema, and um, over the past few years, we've, we've come up with very, very good stories, new stories. It's not like, for example, this story is of an older couple. It's usually young people, right, you have in the rom-coms, but this is different. This is an older couple. We've seen a resurgence of new stories. Now, filmmaking in the Philippines, even if you get a grant, it's, it's tiny, and what you have to work against is tiny budgets and sometimes even if people are willing to help you out there's so many elements like we one two days we had to fight against the weather it wasn't even scheduled to rain that day but the you know tropical country blah 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 and then this other time well, I'm not sure I should be talking about this but like some some guys came along and you know they, they just wanted uh, something extra just because you know we were kind of in their hood even if we already had a permit and everything you know, things you have to work with like that, that are kind of, you know, you really work with, with what you got. And um, it, it's difficult at times, it's frustrating, but it's 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 also very interesting, <laughs> exciting. <laughs> and so how did you guys become involved with the project? Well, Therese had written the script years ago, and yeah. it was going around yeah. several. Therese is uh, actually, she came up with the idea of the story couple years ago and she's been um, workshopping it, um, submitting to uh, pitch festivals, you know, and reworking the script and it actually built up a buzz after a while. And uh, when she applied for the Sin Filipino uh, Seat Grant and for the Sin Filipino uh, Film Festival, uh, of 150 scripts submitted, she was picked up, uh, eight scripts were picked and she was one of them. And that, you know, that got the ball rolling with our uh, funding and you know we raised our own money and then uh, borrowed some money and we had to uh, talk a lot of people down from their regular rates and you know it it's you know like everybody always talks about low budget filmmaking it's, it's a creative filmmaking process you have to adjust and we all wore several hats yeah i mean i was also the ad and uh half the time i was uh security line <laughs> produced You'll notice I was that woman in the car. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we all, yeah. but we did try. We did try, even if everyone is um, wearing several hats at the same time, um, to, to make it a fun set and just it, not a stressful shoot. And um, this, I'm proud to say, was a production where so many of the main um, crew members above the line and below the line were women. We tried to hire mostly women for this story. Let's go and open it up to some questions. Okay. I liked that you had a trans character in the story. And because I'm not up to date on anything with the LGBT community over there, I only know things as of five years ago that I saw on MTV. So how are trans people perceived right now? Like the movie or is it better or, or is that for just the elderly? Mm, that's a very good question, thank you. Um, we're. we're a Catholic, predominantly Catholic country, so that comes with a lot of the religious biases. And as you can see, um, Sammy's character represents a lot of, you know, the hidden homophobia that comes from the machismo culture. Um, although we are very, um, things have progressed since since whatever video we had five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we're very open and we're very accepting of the LGBTQ community, but of course, you can't help it. There's still, there's still, progress to be made with um, the thinking of maybe some older people or some more traditional thinkers, conservative people. But you know, on the whole, we're quite open with the LGBTQ community. I mean, um, and I think the thing you were talking about five years ago was actually with the Americans, so that's a totally different situation. But for the most part, 
I find, especially the younger generations, they're very open with each other and they're very friendly. Um, I am to the point where like people might be offended for other people for no reason. Like I saw uh, a job sign that said "gay hairdresser," and it's interesting. That's like a pre-qualification. So, <laughs> I, I mean, they're very open. That's my point about city. <laughs> And so since we are the Writers' Festival and I'm obsessed with s scripts and the process of how they develop and evolve and change the production process, so how did the original draft that you read, how did that change? Did anything change in the production process? I mean, it usually always does, but uh, what are the things that uh, attracted you to the script initially and then um, what did change um, as the uh, project went to production? Well, um, just. Uh, how we all got involved real quick on the project was that we actually went to film school in, uh, together back in 2009 and um, so we've known each other for a while and we've always helped each other with um, just brainstorming and uh, any ideas. Uh, Sharon's done quite a bit of writing herself in the Philippines and Singapore uh, and Therese, her career is just starting to take off now and um, so and I've always been kind of there to motivate them and you know if I can provide funding so, um, sorry, so back to the original question. Um, it's, the script changes, yeah, they're, um, Teresa's always like been adapting the story. You know, um, once it got to where she submits a Filipino, that's where the writing uh, kind of uh, stopped um, until we got into production and then due to production, you know, you know, you have to adjust during production, especially when you're low budget. You gotta figure out what's more important in the story and what's not, and then you know go through that process. And then when you're editing, you realize there's another story that you have to trim down. So, um, from, I think for the most part, the story is pretty true to the original concept she had. So, I mean, I'm not sure. It's true, actually. A lot of the dialogue, some of the dialogue changes only came around because um, maybe the actor or the actress couldn't say a certain line, or we were really like there was a time factor and we only had the location for the day and so Therese had to decide what she had to take out in terms of what she still needed, what, what, what was serving the story, and what we could just do away with. And what was the production budget and how long, did, uh, how long was the, uh, the shoot? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, shooting days total, we did what, did ten? Yeah, ten shooting days, uh, nine of it uh, principal shooting, then one pickup day, and uh, but it's throughout three week, three four weeks of shooting uh, uh, time frame. So it wasn't like back to back days of shooting. Um, the budget, the budget, uh, the budget. It was um, the the grant was uh, like I said about two thirds of what we raised, and then you know I raised my own money and then borrowed some, and so total budget was around seventy five thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, that's you know from. Uh, Pre-production to camp. That's actually very impressive, especially with the final product. So, uh, congrats to you guys on that. Any other questions? Yeah. I like the ending because you, you have you two serious characters, and you expected a disastrous ending, and you gave a perfect happy ending. That's not a question. Anyone else? Hand back there. Good evening. I enjoyed your movie. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, question, what's next for? Uh, what's next? Yeah. Well, um, for our director, um, Therese, she's actually in Hanoi right now. She had just finished writing a script for something more mainstream. You know, they took her up uh, immediately. Um, and I think she's working on a personal script right now to follow the one that she just did. Um, well, what's next for you? Uh, I, I, I want you to have a, I want you to another movie in the Philippines. Uh, so my next project with um, my crew and stuff, I hopefully we'll do a horror film. Um, they're marketable, and I think it, in the Philippines it'd be interesting. Any other questions? We got time for one more. Yes. I just. Um I thought it was very interesting in dealing with dementia and how that is in the United States versus the Philippines. It's terrifying and um, people here 
you know, you go to assisted living or nursing homes, and I'm wondering what the culture is like in the Philippines for that. Is it taboo to do things like that, always keep somebody at home, your family members? It's actually more common to have, to be taken care of by relatives at home. Nursing homes aren't really that popular yet. Maybe there's a couple, but um, as depicted here, sometimes it's a little not perfect, and that sets off the old people at once. They'll, they'll find any reason not to do it. And usually, yes, you'll have extended family to live with. So yeah, that, that's the current situation. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's such a beautiful film, and thank you so much for sharing it with us.